Hi, I'm Colleen Lewis, and on behalf of myself and my colleague and friend, Phil Conrad, I'm excited to share with you the teaching practices game. So we designed this as an interactive training for teaching assistants. I think with the growth in computer science, we're really having trouble keeping up in supporting our TAs or our teaching assistants in learning and applying inclusive teaching practices. The development of this teaching practices game was supported by a SIGC special projects grant that we received and additional funding from uh, an NSF grant that supports csteachingtips.org. Okay, our motivation came from the fact that a lot of teaching assistants were in really tricky situations. For example, what would you say or or do if a student seemed to just want you to tell them the answer. We need our TAs to be prepared for this. What would you want your TA to say if a student said, women just don't like CS? Phil and I collected a bunch of these tricky situations that TAs find themselves in and made a deck of cards where TAs and instructors can talk through these different teaching scenarios. So here's how the game is played. One person, that's the leader, they draw a card and read the question to a small group. You can probably play in groups of maybe you know, two to seven. Um, each person answers how they would respond or they pass. And then the cards each have a sample answer on them. So the leader re will read the sample answer on the card. And then the leader picks their favorite answer from the answers that they heard. And they may might say why that's a particularly effective strategy that the person recommended. And you can use the cards to tally points. And then the leader, the person who reads the card, that rotates clockwise. We've been mailing people decks of this game and people report that sometimes they'll use it in a before classes start TA training, or some people use it during their weekly TA meeting to go through just a card or two. The key strategies that the scenarios are trying to highlight is first and foremost, empathizing with students. Second, we want TAs to be looking for opportunities to promote belonging in computing amongst students. The extent to which students feel like they belong in our classrooms, in our majors, in computer science as a field is really important for their success. One thing that can be helpful in that is challenging stereotypes. Even when a stereotype seems positive, it's important to dig a little deeper and say, what are the implications of an assumption of that stereotype? Who does that stereotype hurt? And often these are just stereotypes. And we really need our TAs to be leaders in challenging stereotypes so that we can create inclusive classrooms and inclusive computing environments. And then the last piece is that we're not trying to fix any people when our students are in toxic environments. It's not that they just need to be tougher or develop more grit. We really want to change the structure, structures of our classroom so that all students can be successful. The game has two rounds. The first round is focused on teaching scenarios, and then the second round is focused more explicitly on diversity and inclusion discussions. And here we have some recommendations for TAs when they don't know what to say. Even just asking a question, what makes you say that? Or the real honesty, I don't know what to say. I think that one's really important for our TAs when something happens during a section or in front of other students. They can say, I don't know what to say, and that allows them to come back to it in the future. Again, when we're challenging stereotypes or other implicit bias, we want to empathize. So I used to think about it like that, but now, or I can see see why you might say that, but we really want our TAs to be able to be leaders in this space of helping us make inclusive classrooms and an inclusive computing environment. I think it's important for TAs to recognize that their response might vary based upon the power dynamics. So if it's a professor that says the thing, they might respond in different ways. But if their students in their section are going to hear, that might really mean that they need to respond. And I think it's really important for us to rec remind our students to prioritize self-care. So if a microaggression, that's one of these statements that can be a subtle or unintentional slight. When one of those microaggressions targets one of our TAs, we want them to know that they can opt out of addressing it. But when a microaggression targets others, it's really important to engage. For example, I'm a white woman. And so if I hear sexism, I might not be up for addressing it in that moment. And I might opt out. But because I'm a white person, if I hear a racist comment, I really need to engage with that. The teaching practices game in collaboration with Phil Conrad is made as part of the CS Teaching Tips project. That's primarily an NSF funded project to document and disseminate effective teaching practices. 
We have a bunch of tip sheets. In addition to this game, you can check out our website at csteachingtips.org and you can requ request copies of the game. And I also have a game, Microaggressions, the game. So the cards in this set overlap with the teaching practices game, but it includes more examples of microaggressions because it doesn't include the teaching scenarios that we have in the teaching practices game. And you can go to csteachingtips.org slash cards to get more information about either of the games or request a copy. Again, I want to thank Sigsi for the special projects grant that supported this collaboration between myself and Phil. We'd be excited to send you dozens of sets of the game so that you can help your teaching assistants create and sustain an inclusive computing community. Thank you very much.